let's put it another way with the homo sapiens and transitus and its strategic activity. As extraordinary as that is to be human, for a rave, tranquility and stillness is going to be part of their process. But they're still, both of us, probing the world in a different way, very different way, these raves coming together and probing. Humans articulate. We have a crude way of communicating through language, bursting through on the world with our social media, trying to maintain status by being noisy and making movement in order to attract attention. We have this gift of articulation, but it's been developing over 90,000 years. It's time to mutate. And so the design of the rave to them, we are primitive, just like the immune system is primitive and no longer necessary for them because they don't need words to commune. They merge. They have this listening without ears because of their frequency attention, the layers and layers. Remember, it's right. So right variable arrow taking in layers of frequency information that is so dramatically different to anything that we can comprehend. Everything is frequency here in this reality. The core of the truth is that everything is vibrating. And so therefore, everything can be transmitted through frequency, frequency attention, frequency collection. In a human, experience has to mean th something. We're always trying to make sense of what does it mean? What did we go through? You know? So why did that happen? It always links over to why? You know, the great big why in the sky for us human beings. We cannot separate ourselves from that. It is the I am because. I am because I decided because, you know, all this because, because. I am because this and that. Linking what we see or experience visually because. And our becauses aren't necessarily truth. It is only our perceptual reality in that moment. We, as human species, cannot just collect for collecting's sake. We cannot breathe just to breathe. There's always this why in the sky. That's what it is to be human. Meaning, value in relationship. But raves have no agenda. An individual rave has no agenda or reason to do anything with the frequencies that they take in. Raw found it beautiful as far as the experiential circuit in the sense of the way in which this really works here. Because if we look at this from the cognitive point of view, what we're dealing with is the design of a life force that's designed to take in very, like enormously large amounts of data and organizing that data to use its intellectual energy by collecting without being involved in reason or why or meaning or strategic application. This is just about surrendering to the larger force that will tap in and provide things that the individual does not have, according to Ra. The penta, when it comes together, it being a rave, when these rave people come together in their penta, that is when this extraordinary capacity to be able to take advantage of that tremendous power of collection, the penta can tap into all of it. And that's a very different thing than our current day and age where it's focused only on, you know, those three to five beings that are there physically. How a penta that is rave can transcend, who knows, space and time? How far can they probe? Can they go into the future? Can they go into the past? Can they go um, transspecially? Can they go into the 
ethos. We don't know. So Ra wants to pose a question to us. He says, can you imagine the learning curve, what that learning curve is in a melded consciousness where you've got three or four or five different ones, different raves, of these huge resource engines being driven by a penta, what that level of consciousness may be about, how deep and profound its resources and how the information is instantly shared within their penta, melded, if you will. Remember, everybody has it. The moment one has it, everybody has it. Everybody is one with it. Everybody watches because they're all aware transorically aware watching it do its itness so penta in a rave being more of a strategic entity that's it's going to be it's it's going to take willing advantage not like a penta with humans the individual raves are going to be satisfied, you could say, in that sense of being integrated into what is that dynamic because it's going to allow them to enter into the dimension that is their world, that the dimension that they live in, which is a frequency-based dimension. So their perceptual reality being attuned to higher and lower vibrational frequencies of reality that we cannot even access as human. So the Maya is built on our perceptual reality. Can you agree that human design is the mechanic of Maya? And once we train our eyes to see, our perceptual reality changes. Reality. The illusion of Maya is built on perception. Maya is built on our perceptual awareness. So when we get up every morning, we open our eyes. Ah, I'm in this room. This is where I am. And all the reality comes flooding back to you because you have memories of the past. This is the way the illusion works in us. It works through our eyes. If we don't have eyes to see, then it works through our other senses but we're just using this perceptually. Some people very much attuned frequency, smell, taste, touch, you know, inner vision, not just outer ish vision, whether you have eyes to see or not. So remember, when we look through our evolutionary movement or journey, this story, once upon a time, smell was the first thing. Then we have taste, outer vision our strategic way of perceiving into the world of our maya, and then the development of inner vision, feel, and touch. So these raves operating through frequency, when you're operating through frequency, you're no longer seeing in the way that the human sees. We move from outer vision into inner vision. That's an entirely different dynamic. The world that doesn't have the visual perceptions of what we see in the world around us like trees and sky and rainbows and grass and lakes and forests and rivers. They won't be there in that perceptual reality. It's only frequency. And so how that frequency is going to be interpreted by the penta and shared in the consciousness of that rave with feeling all of the touch, only frequency. Ra said even he did not know and couldn't even imagine how the shared consciousness would perceive the raves. The fact is, we're not going to live in the same world together. They are going to inhabit a different dimension. According to a quote, it's the perfect balance. It's not so much they are taking away our earth. It's that they will have their own and we will never have access to 
that is one that we will never live in, a unique dimensional environment based on their perception, unquote. So don't pity them when they come in and it seems that all they can do is flounder about and barely take care of themselves when you see them individually and you worry about their survival. It's a dimension that's so intense that they read all kinds of information from it that we have no access to, we have no idea is even there. The rave living in its own dimension will have its own world, this world of intense frequency that only they can interpret in their way, in their penta. It sounds like science fiction. And yet, now we come to the other side of the collective circuit where the keynote is perfect, perfect logic. We know that it has this element of perfecting, doesn't it? Always looking for improvement, insatiably correcting and perfecting. But now look at the difference. What do we lose? You can see that in the collective circuit here for the human homo sapiens and transitus, we see that we have everything here that we normally are connected to and yet what's missing until you get to the ashna the only difference here is that there is no head center involved in this collective logic which was about sharing here now in the rave it's about perfect 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 so what is left of what we as humans would call the source of the strategic doubts, no doubts, no more, no need for answers. Isn't that interesting? The collective perfect. And everything here on this left side, remember, it's always going to be about survival, the fundamentals of survival in a human being, survival, the patterns the concentration, focused, alphaness, organizing, all of these details in order that we can share the experiment of being human. So if we switch over to looking at what is right, rave, the right, perfect. If you're right, you cannot afford to be strategic. It's not your business. It's not what you're involved in. So you quad rights, you're not here to be strategic at all. And these raves are going to be right. So humans have doubt. What saves us in logic as humans is that we have doubts. Doubts can always emerge. That, remember, linked to the four and then opposition in the wheel, we have a new set of principles New doubts emerge about old principles. That is the way of the human species. We can accept that logic is valuable. We can accept that logic may be valuable about the future, but for how long? We do not know. And without doubt, we are never turn tuned into stagnation. Doubt leads us to question the patterns that we see. Doubt leads us to formulate answers. We share those doubts in order to find our way forward. But what happens when it's gone? When it's gone, the answer is resolved or fixed. There's no doubts, none whatsoever in a rave. Their keynote is perfect. So accordingly to what this rave can be, because remember, it's going to depend on what genetic imprints they do have and what collectively they are in their penta. But when we see the way that the four operates, the fact that there is no 63, but you see, still see four here, okay? There is no 63, it's been co-opted by the experiential circuitry, that 63. Okay, so 
for the four without a 63, there's no value in it to a human. So there's no longer a strategic impetus, only stagnation. That's what you're going to get here according to Ra because there's no need for answers. So in this rave, you're going to see you have immune system stagnation. What he means by that is that whatever the basic nature of the rave's immune system is going to be, it's going to be very, very basic. All of it is going to be about opening up its immune system requirements to something else. So providing all of its immune system needs to the penta rather than, um, so they'll be very fragile, in other words, in a, an individual context. But the moment they come into their penta, that's when things will really light up and that's what will protect them and allow them to be because it's not about the strategies of trying to survive. In a human being, that channel 63.4, it's still going to be there, but in humans, it won't work very well. So they're gonna be less and less doubts. The fertility of this species being turned down. Humans not going to have that same kind of phenomenon of this channel because what we have to remember here is that um, the mutation is going to bring forth different varieties of our species as we slowly, uh, my mind said choked out, <laughs> like die off, but we won't get to that point of actually being extinct because the planetary um, lifespan is going to be cut short by asteroids in about 1300 years, according to Ra, according to the voice. So who knows, you and I won't be there to witness that tragedy. But who knows, you know, what what will happen. Just that our species is going to be um, less and less fertile. And this is part of that process not as much doubt, not working as well, our logic working as well, our awareness being able to provide answers working as well because it won't need to. When we look at the rave, this keynote of being perfect, remember it's cut off from the head center in this circuit, this collective circuit. The deepest level of what we think about as our passenger consciousness, the passenger of the rave being cut off. So the personality is not what's being invited into the aura for survival. Now that is mind blowing in and of itself, being born into a rave where the personality consciousness has a very different relational field, if you will, to its body, because one of its access points being uh, cut off, one of its ways of connecting being cut off. So then, in essence, what we're really looking at, if we take a look at the collective circuit that is perfect in what used to be um, logic and sharing, in essence, to be really clear, the most important part of this circuit right here in a rave is going to be its penta. And here's the penta activation. The part that runs through between the sacral and the identity of the G and the throat. It, in a penta, this no longer is a sacral or a G or a throat their portals and vortices of energy. They no longer function independently. They are part of something greater. So when you look at everything about the circuit to perfect, is to perfect actually right here, this 15, to be very specific, the 15th gate 
in order for a penta to start or to be created, we need this 15. The 15 is the thing, the magnetic auric frequency field that pulls the penta together. It's the portal that or the energetic frequency place that gets everything started. If you have ever been in a penta and studied penta and had the experience of seeing how people, kind of like how 45s have people gather together to them because of that um, dominance of leadership, 15 brings forth the energy to pull people to it. And so the 15 is what gets that energetic started in the penta. Okay, 15 is the critical aspect that pulls the penta together. That's where we begin with the energy. So the little foot is getting started off on the right foot, putting the penta together, 15. That's the one. It's like a magnetic field. So it is, its job is to take in the magnetic field, not just the magnetic um, being creature itself it is if you know of it 15 you know what I mean especially if you're a five like me you know how attractive those 15s can be how magnetic the quality of their aura remember 15 and five larger aura yeah larger aura the moment you see a five or a 15 that is so that it has its magnetic field so as it pulls as that 15 pulls the individuals to it and creates that magnetic frequency. This 15 is the auric attractor that pulls on the magnetic fields of the other. So pulling them, creating through this vortex of energy, that spiraling of energy, pulling them towards it in order for the frequency, the transauric frequency to be created. This is what's doing the work. The 15 is doing the work, pulling these into the vitality and the form that that particular penta will make. So everything about this particular circuit in a rave, which is about perfecting, perfect, is surrendering over to the aura. So the openness to be taken in by the penta specifically designed to turn over its information. It's, you could say it's a strategic formula to the penta, but no strategic value to it alone. Raves are not allowed to be individual, not like you and I. They're not built for it. That's not what their point is. There's no individuation of a rave. It is surrendering, giving oneself over to the group. My mind, my human mind says, in a way, it's kind of a mercy, yeah, for the uh, personality crystal to be disconnected in that kind of way, because it has less of this identification factor, you see. So we as homo sapiens, we perfect the pattern and then we're secure. We who are in transitus, freedom is interesting to us as human creatures because we are here to individuate. It is our birthright, us who are born before 2027, particularly the inner truth door being part of our keys to this age. Accordingly to Ra, who founded the system, the great and only freedom is to have your own authority. I would say to be your own authority. He thinks that it's the only thing that truly frees you within this illusion of Maya, within the context of living deeply identified with mind. The only thing that really frees us as a human being is to be our own authority. It's the logic of the system. It's the reason why it was formulated in such a way to always bring human beings back to the truth that they can only trust themselves. It's what we need in this current age and moving forward into the future in order that we survive and thrive in a way that is in alignment so the logic process in the human, again, it will still work, just won't work as well. 
It's our deepest strategic process that we require to perfect the pattern and then we're secure. And that's not the game of rave. Rave is the pattern can never be perfected. You're not allowed to have your own authority if you're a rave because it's not built into you. This is now the circuit of giving over of one's individual identification into the group construct. I give up my individual authority over to my group. The pattern can never be perfected. And Ra found that to be a great irony because the perfection is what is turned over to the potential of whatever it is that that penta has. So remember, pentas are built upon three to five different people. They're always going to have different genetic imprints. Therefore, the penta can only be as competitive or as capable or as viable as what it is together. Yet when it comes together, it's going to create more. It's going to generate more. It's going to be more vital, more capable when it is in group. And that depends on what those individual raves bring to the group. The perfection or the depth of what it means to be a rave is that, again, you take in enormous amounts of information all this information that you would need to take in, you just don't do anything with it in the sense of you're not strategizing with it. You're absorbing it. And the absorption of what it is is being directly taken in by the penta. So there's no doubts about what you're taking in, no fear, no answers, no God, no drive to find... Mm, religion outside of you or awakening that's not a point in this creature that rave dimension has no doubt no god they don't have anything to do with what rave will be so this process what ross says about what these raves are to be is quote there's nothing new no new pattern, there's nothing, because it's not the job of the rave to turn this into something. It's not the job of the rave to organize on the outside. Remember, this is an internal thing. Only to organize on the inside, only to take everything in, only to give everything its place, only to make everything available to the penta, to be a supplicant to that perfection of what it is being turned over to the other, the others in your group. So with us homo sapiens and transitists, remember you are your own authority. We do not understand what that is, the raves, because we cannot, we can imagine, we can guess, we can fantasize, but the reality of it, no question. We are here for differentiation, form differentiation, not just mental awareness differentiation so humans are fulfilled in discovering their own unique individuality individuation and being our own authority brings us to the differentiation of this particular construct this body that has been built by this aura which was imprinted by those planets at that time during that frame of this reality going through the cycles of our lives. Whereas the rave abandons individual authority, it has no choice there. It cannot choose to go off and be its own sovereign self. It won't function. It gives everything over to a transcendent consciousness fulfilled through abandoning one's nature of individual selfhood. They won't have that nature to begin with, releasing themselves to transcendent. What does transcendent mean? Consciousness that transcends. Everything becomes something more. Out of the solitude of individuation, 
our mutation finds oneness through our penta that is aware. And they who are aware to which we have no ability to commune with individually, there will be um, the potential for us to have some kind of connection, but not the full-blown communion that these who are born into this kind of form will commune with each other. There's just no access to it. Ra says, none of us can imagine the impact of what will be, what it will be when we meet a conscious penta aura and you look physically at what are the participants that are there. And your left counter, human counterpart is still caught in thinking vulnerable. You know, when you look at their form, you look at what you see with your eyes, and you feel that aura because it's not us. It's not us. When we look at them, it's not us. So each one of them are going to be parts of the whole that is greater, greater than the sum of itself. And it is the conscious penta that will run the show, the conscious penta that has a material imperative, material imperative. Pentas are material. And the conscious penta provides the way that information is going to be stored in these forms and how it's accessed and put forward by that penta. And we don't have that access to that dimension in which they will put forth their awareness. We don't. It's so intense that they're going to read all kinds of information from it, information we cannot access in these individual forms. So a reminder that they will have their own world, their own dimension, this world of intense frequency that they, in their grouping, can translate, can meld but not from a place of strategic. It's just from a place of itness and being. <laughs>